Welcome to our VISTA Table Talks mini summer series. I'm Kim Chin, the Assistant National Director of Up to Us VISTA. In the first part of our mini series, we're joined by Summer VISTA Carl Lund, founder of the brand Tempo SFC, and Paul Kakamo, founder and CEO of Up to Us Sports, to discuss the ins and outs of starting a brand or a nonprofit. We'll dive into the challenges and the inspirations they had to start the process and how they got to where they are today. To lead this conversation, I'm going to pass it over to Alana Scardino, an Up to Us summer cohort leader, who is the founder of her own nonprofit, Rising Phoenix. Alana, please Thanks. feel free to take it away. Thanks so much for the kind introduction, Kim. I'm so excited to be here to facilitate this conversation with each of you. And I'd love to open just for our listeners to get a better sense of both Up to Us Sports and Tempo F uh, SFC. Um, Paul, you founded Up to Us Sports over a decade ago and have been one of the real developers of the sport-based youth development space. Can you just give an overview of what Up to Us Sports is and what the organization's all about to start us off? Great. So hi. Hi, Alana, and glad to be here with you, Carolyn. Uh, Up to Us Sports is a national nonprofit organization, and our goal, as many I think in our audience might know, is to uh, recruit, train, and support coaches and vistas who inspire communities and through sports-based youth development. And uh, we started. I started it just about 11 years ago now, and I was actively working in a sports-based youth development program called America Scores. And I realized that there was such a great need for coaches in so many communities. And there was also a lot of young men and women in communities who wanted to coach but there wasn't an AmeriCorps program that really put two and two together. And so that was the impetus. And then we added our VISTA program as years went on. And uh, our VISTA program is now as big as our AmeriCorps coach program. And really our goal is to bring more sports opportunities to kids in underserved communities, to support coaches and VISTAs in using national service as a stepping stone to their future careers and to also leadership and giving back to their communities and hopefully creating a lot healthier and more vibrant communities because we're there in those communities every day. Awesome, love to hear all that. Thanks so much for the overview. Carlin, you're a summer Vista with Skate Like a Girl and the founder of Tempo SFC. Can you just give a brief overview of Tempo and the mission of your brand? Yeah, uh, so Tempo is a skateboarding and art collective. Um, we are dedicated to highlighting and documenting um, athletes and artists who are otherwise underrepresented in those industries. Um, so we focus on women, non-binary, and trans individuals. Awesome. And yeah, we, uh, are, we have videos, uh, zines, and a clothing line. Awesome. Sounds so exciting. So cool. We're super fortunate to have both of you on today because you're in such different places on your journey as founders of organizations. Uh, kind of going into a little bit more of how each of you founded all of your organizations, can you just give some background on the inspiration of what led you to start your own unique org? Sure. Uh, you know, it comes down to the fact that I've always been involved in education and youth development. And I always think no matter how complicated our world gets, at the end of the day, there's one thing that makes a difference and that's a caring adult in a young person's life. Mm -hmm. And so for me, Alana, for many years, and I know everyone listening, there must be some passion because you're all involved in social service and change. For me, that was the passion was that young people, if they could be matched with an adult who cares about them, then they can be empowered to make better decisions, to feel more secure about themselves, to have someone to turn to when there's a challenge or a problem that they're facing, who's got more experience, who's gonna, who's gonna have their back basically. And so I was like, you know, where, who are the adults then that kids trust? Especially in underserved communities where kids learn faster to sort of not trust as easily because of, so there's so many challenges that they face on a continuous basis. So who are the adults out there who kids trust? And throughout my career, I've always asked that question. Like, was there an adult in your life? Unfortunately for most kids, it's still their parents, but, for, for, but parents aren't always there. So we need more adults. And sometimes it isn't unfortunately a parent. 
And so one of the answers I always receive from kids about, you know, this adult cares about me. This adult always checks in on me. This adult was a coach. And when I kept hearing that over and over again, I thought to myself, wow, you know, maybe we should have a national service program about coaching. And that was kind of the inspiration for starting Up To Us Sports is I gathered a whole bunch of sports organizations. As I mentioned before, I ran a soccer literacy program called America Scores. I gathered baseball, softball, squash, skateboard programs. And we all got together in a room and we said, aren't our coaches some of the most significant adult mentors in our kids' lives? Why don't we turn this into a collaboration and create a national service AmeriCorps program around coaches? That's what happened 11 years ago. We applied for our first AmeriCorps grant. We got it. And the last 11 years have been steady growth of the AmeriCorps program and our VISTA program as well. Amazing. I'm like leaning in as you're speaking, Paul. It's so great hearing all of the, all the background to up to us. Carlin, what about you and Tempo? Uh, yeah, so I started skating like six years ago um, in San Francisco, which is kind of like the mecca of skateboarding. So there's a ton of places to skate and people that are skating as well. Um, and I was lucky enough to have a group of other um, people who identified as women to skate with. And that made me feel safe and comfortable to grow as a skater. Um, and as I started traveling more and meeting more girls who also skate, like I realize that a lot of people don't have those communities and don't have that support system and don't feel comfortable going to their local skate parks um, just because they don't feel safe um, or they don't feel represented by the skate like community. Um, so I was inspired by organizations like Skate Like a Girl and um, some other awesome brands out there like the Skate Witches. And I decided that I wanted to start a brand where girls and women could look up to people who are killing it in this industry that they wouldn't have found out otherwise. Awesome. I love that you're on this mission to make that awesome, warm, safe community that you had more accessible. That's fantastic. Paul, you're one of the pioneers of the sport-based youth development movement. You were one of those individuals that's really been pushing that term and that phrase and this movement forward, which is super exciting. Uh, were there any challenges that came when trying to start up SBYD organizations in a time when there wasn't a lot of knowledge or discourse about what SBYD is or why it's important? Yeah, the, the, the biggest challenge was how do you make the case that it's more than sports? And I think that a lot of times when in, in the 25 years that I've been in this SBYD movement, a lot of times, uh, you know, we depend when you start something, you need to make a case that what you're, what you're starting matters. And in, in the case of nonprofits, which has been my entire career, you need to make your case to often foundations or corporations that you have a purpose that leads to some positive outcome, whether it's the health, the mental wellness, um, the employability of coaches, but you've got to make that case. So the biggest challenge for me, Alana, was to say that sports leads to these positive outcomes. Sports mm -hmm. leads to educational success. Sports leads to physical health and well-being. And you know, I think for a lot of us who are athletes, yeah, that makes sense. But actually, it's never, the, the case has never been made to foundations, to corporate funders. They always thought of sports as some kind of recreational activity that just happened. That, mm -hmm. you know, kids did um, after school, there was competition, there's the champions, there's fun, but that it wasn't really tied specifically into outcomes like, will a kid end up succeeding and going to school and graduating because they're part of a sports team? Will they end up uh, choosing healthier uh, uh, foods when they eat, having better nutrition because of a sports team? So that was my challenge, was to try and say that sports, and that's really why we came up with the term sports-based youth development, is more than sports. It is youth development. And that I can prove, if you can give me funding for my nonprofit, that I will give you kids who will stay in school more, kids who will have a better mental uh, health attitude, kids who will say no to violence, kids who will have more positive self-esteem. 
And it was a long, long time of making that argument and proving it to funders and getting them to say, okay, let me try and fund this. But that's, that's what it takes to run a nonprofit or to run a business like Carlin. Yeah, absolutely. That's such an interesting challenge because I feel like so many people who have played sport, if they sat down and were forced to really think about the impact it made on their lives, they can pick out all of these important pieces of what really helped make a positive impact on them, but it really might not be at the forefront of a lot of people's consciousness. So bringing that to the forefront, making it uh, more of a, a piece of information that people are aware of is such an interesting challenge that it's, I'm so glad is progress is being made on. Carlin, switching it over to you, what challenges have you experienced in these kind of starting phases of founding Tempo SFC? Uh, yeah, I also wanted to add what, to what Paul was saying. Um, I think especially now, uh, just what's been happening at the Olympics, um, Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka pulling out because of their mental health on the world stage, like that is such a huge statement and like will impact all of the kids who are watching and realizing like, yes, I can be a part of these programs and I can do sports and try to win, but my mental health is just as important, if not more important than having fun and going out and competing. Um, but yeah, going back to your question, um, Tempo has been, uh, I've been, I started last year, um, but we haven't like officially launched yet. Um, uh, my biggest challenge is just like raising capital and finding the time and the team to get things going. Um, right now, pretty much everything I'm doing is a one woman team, um, just because I don't have the capital, but I am supported by a ton of people out there who are helping me. And Tempo wouldn't be where it's at without all of the athletes and artists that I do work with. Um, and yeah, it's just been a crazy year with everything going on. Um, and just like trying to network and get to know as many people as I can has been a really huge goal as we get to the stages where we can start funding. You know, and, and Carlin, I wanna say that I never forgot 11 years ago when I moved into an empty office that was donated to me in New York. Um, the first, ju just me and one other um, guy who I'd started this organization and had hired right away. And it was just us in an empty office for almost six months. And, uh, you know, and, and that's how all great ideas begin is, you know, they're usually a one or two person show, but those one or two people don't give up on what they believe in. And they have the passion to make the argument that this is why what I believe in matters. And, you know, 11 years later, we're 50 plus staff, you know, 350, 400 coaches, you know, 250 vistas and more power to you. That's the yeah. process. Hearing like stories like that of people starting like really small and just growing over time is like, it doesn't matter when I launch, as long as I keep working on it, like it will happen and it, it's will grow in years to come like anything else. Carlin, how do you stay motivated when you don't have that capital or you're undergoing those challenges? What are ways to keep things going? Um, yeah, I think just like remembering the values of your, if you are starting a company um, or an organization, remembering why, why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. Um, whatever you're doing should be filling a gap somewhere. Um, so for Tempo, we're trying to fill the gap of underrepresented skaters. And like, there are brands out there that exist, but some of the values that I also wanted to bring into Tempo was sustainability mm -hmm. and um, paying people fair wages for the work that they do. Um, so when I try like think about giving up or thinking that all of this isn't worth it and it's never going to happen. I just think about those gaps that I'm filling and the people that I'm doing it for. And it just reminds me that, yeah, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It might not happen this year, but it's going to happen someday. And it's going to make someone feel like they belong to a part of the community that they maybe didn't think they were a part of before. And, and again, I'd love to jump in there and say that, Carlin, that uh, you point out values. And I, I think we, we often, you know, in this entrepreneurial world or society, we say, oh, okay, I have an idea, I wanna start something. And, and like you pointed out, what, what's unique about what you wanna start? 
Is it a different population? Is it a different kind of service that doesn't exist? Um, is it a different geography? Like what's unique? But then also, I think really important what you just said is, and what are your values in doing it? And I think that's the piece that a lot of social entrepreneurs forget to think of right from the beginning. You know, and we're in a very tumultuous time. Uh, and with, you know, all the cries for like, let's finally get racial justice and social justice right in this country. You know, I think it's really important when you, whether you're starting a for-profit business or a nonprofit to think, what are my values? How do I look at participation, at e equality, at justice? And how do I, I should write those down alongside of my business plan. So thank you for bringing that up. I think that's critical. Definitely. Yeah, I love this conversation about all these points to bring up, Carlin, about values, but also that grit and perseverance to work through um, and remember why you started something is also great. Uh, and Paul mentioned just uh, what starting an organization with the idea that is something different and filling a gap, uh, which is so important. I was wondering if you could just touch on a little bit more, Carlin, why you wanted to start your own brand instead of joining up uh, a, the team of a brand that already existed and trying to expand it. What made the ideation for Tempo so different that you decided to put this work in and push in and be the one woman team to make it its own separate thing? Uh, yeah, well, there are a ton of other organizations out there um, and they're all awesome. And I've definitely gotten inspiration from them. Um, but honestly, none of them really exist in San Francisco, which is kind of like the Mecca of skateboarding. Um, there's a ton of brands um, and like the biggest skateboarding brand Thrasher Magazine is located there. And a lot of those brands, you know, they have women on their team or um, that work behind the scenes. Um, but they're never like put on the pedestal. Like they're never like, oh, like here are the women that we support. And like, they're kind of just like there to be a token. And I believe that there should be like an actual girls team um, and not only girls, like there's a lot of uh, clubs out there that are like girls skate team and girls and women. But I also wanted to kind of open it up to also non-binary and trans individuals. And like hopefully in the future someday, I also want to get in um, some like disabled folks um, and like open the doors to like people who you wouldn't think of would be a, a skater that you see on the cover of a magazine or in these popular videos. Awesome. The scape is definitely changing as far as inclusion. And it's so great to have people like yourself who are pushing this movement forward. So that's all awesome to hear. Uh, I wanted to ask both of you, as I'm hearing all of these stories about how Up to Us Sports and Tempo have started as kind of these one to two person teams, really pushing forward for months on end to build up a really solid foundation for these organizations. What does the process look like of building up support for your organizations and whether that's just from communities or potential uh, donors or contributors or uh, governing bodies? What does that support building look like for each of you and your organizations? Well, I'll start and say that I, I mentioned this a little earlier, I think we both touched on it, was that uh, you really have to be able to articulate exactly what it is you are trying to do and why it matters. Um, you know, whether it's a business service or a nonprofit service, why does this matter? Why would someone want to support it or buy it or participate in it? And so again, for the, the big step for the startup for Up to Us Sports was to say that, you know, why sports matter isn't just the recreational winning the high school, you know, championship. It's about if it's done right, it's about mental wellness, it's about physical health, it's about nutrition, leadership, anti-violence, girl empowerment. This is why sports matters. And so finding, finding out how and practicing, I mean, I literally sometimes will, will practice what I wanna to pitch to someone in like, like they say in front of a mirror, I'll just stand there and say, I feel stupid, but I'm gonna practice making a pitch because you really got, that's, that's number one, Alana, I think in answering your question is if you can't make that pitch, then the audience doesn't matter. You gotta make the pitch first and be confident in it and passionate about it. Now go out and find as many audiences that will listen to that pitch because you have no idea who's gonna say, hey, 
I'd like to invest in that. Or come see me tomorrow. I'll help you start your nonprofit or I'll incorporate you as a business. And literally it was little things like that. I'll tell you, I went to a reception and I was telling people, this is what I want to start. And someone said, go talk to that guy. I had no idea he was the commissioner of the NFL. It was Paul Tagliabu. I didn't know him. I walked over. It was a reception. I just said, this is what I want to do. And I didn't even know I was, why I was even talking to this guy. Someone said, go talk to him. And then he said to me, come see me in my office tomorrow. And his law firm that he was transitioning from the NFL to work for ended up incorporating our nonprofit and making up to us sports a legal reality. So it's always pitching and being passionate uh, and being able to articulate why it matters. Yeah, I like what you said about like telling the pitch to every single person that will listen because I think after you get that pitch down, like the second most important thing is networking, um, especially before you start funding. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and that's why I'm here at this podcast. Like I'm just reaching out to every single connection I have. Um, no matter where, where you are, what you're doing, like if you're at your day job, you never know, like maybe some of your coworkers would be interested or maybe their parents are interested in funding you. Like there's so many people that you, you have no idea like how they're going to react to what you're doing. And most of the time, like they're going to be excited. And even if they aren't like a huge like support like if they can't fund you or if they can't get you a bunch of resources and connections like if they like what you're doing like they're going to be a part of your organization someday like if you are selling things like they're going to be a customer or if you are a nonprofit, like maybe they're interested in volunteering or just being a part of it or being on the board of directors like you never know like every single person can help you and you should never uh like doubt anyone. And Carl, I, I, I want to add to that, that no, no audience is too small because sometimes people think, oh, you know, I need to get immediately a social media following of a thousand followers on my, like when I started before social media, but when I launched up to sports, we, we said, let's, um, let's invite people to like, uh, after, you know, an af uh, happy hour and we'll, we'll call aside you know, stop the music and just talk about a national service program to do coaches. And a lot of the times we did little things like that. I had a, a law firm, the same one, had a little reception and they invited lawyers. A lot of times two or three people showed up. So that's not too small because one of those people, Carolyn, like you, Carolyn, like you just said, could end up being your next board of directors member, could end up writing your first check. And so I never, ever let the size of the room bother me. And I, I, you know, it's, <laughs> so I just feel that that's important to share. Yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Such a good idea. I agree, just the, the value of every single person and not underestimating the value that any single person uh, or group of people can have is such a such a great notion. So thank you both for sharing. While we're on the topic of audiences, how can the listeners of this Table Talk best support your organizations or any SBYD slash Sport for Social Change brands? Um, well, you guys can follow us on our social channels, uh, tempo.sfc. And also we have our website, uh, tempo-sfc.com. Um, we're gonna be launching very soon, hopefully. Um, yeah, we're coming out with a new video, a uh, line of clothes and a zine and stay tuned because it's gonna be super awesome. That's awesome. Uh, for, I'm glad you went first, Caroline, because you remind <laughs> me that uh, social media should probably be the first thing I say and <laughs> because we didn't have it at the start of Updust Sports, but um, Follow us on social media at Updust Sports on Twitter, Facebook, uh, everything, all of them. Um, <laughs> we're there. But uh, also tell her, you know, talk about this story, help share this message. Um, you know, is there someone out there who could be a coach who you know? Uh, is there someone out there who could be a Vista? Um, someone who you think loves sports and you'd love to introduce them to, to me? I'll talk to everyone, just like the first days all the way to now, I'll talk to absolutely everyone. I'll set up time and talk to them about why this matters, why they should get involved. Uh, so just help us spread the message that sports is more than sports, especially at a time like now, where kids have been dealing with so much mental health challenges from COVID and whatnot. And how do we 
sort of get them the support to know that they're going to be okay. And a team and a coach are certainly two ways to do it. So sports is so much more important now. So help share our story. And, uh, and you know, in jobs, the, you can post a job and you may or may not get the right candidate. But if you talk to your friends and your friends talk to people about that job, you are 10 times more likely to get someone who matters in that position. So our audience here talking to other people about become a coach, become a Vista, look at, you know, I want to introduce you to Paul. I want to introduce you to Carlin, what they're doing. Like that, that, that is a much more secure way of building long-term support for what we are doing and trying to accomplish. Wonderful, really great insights, both of you. Just to kind of end and wrap up, I'd love to hear from each of you just maybe one final piece of advice each of you has for any of our listeners or anyone looking to start an SBYD organization or any kind of brand. When, when I talk to people and I often spend a lot of my time volunteering to talk to a young entrepreneur about a startup because I have, started or participated in the startup of three or four, I can't remember now, major national nonprofits. And I always feel that sometimes I overwhelm them because if they want to know the big picture of starting a business or starting an organization, there's your business plan, fundraising, staffing and hiring, governance, board of directors, um, HR and finance, uh, accounting, <laughs> programming, evaluation. There's so many pieces to, that create a big business, but you know what? You'll get to it. And so my biggest advice is that will all follow. What needs to happen is you need to be passionate about what you want to do. And you need to be able to make the case that what you do is important. And then tomorrow you may be hiring your first staff. Next week, you might be building a board of directors. Uh, Four months from now, you might actually have a fundraising person helping you. It will come, all those pieces. So don't get overwhelmed, okay? Every business started with someone with a passion and idea, in it, sometimes in an empty office, who did, today, I'm going to reach out to these people. And it grew. It grew and grew. And so, yes, keep in mind the big picture, but keep in mind the power of you. Yeah, and I think one way you can do that is like when you do see the big picture, like break it down into little steps and just do one thing each day. Um, and if you can't do something one day, like that's okay. There's always tomorrow. Um, if you have deadline, like always set deadlines just so you know you work on your stuff. But if you can't make the deadline, it's okay. Like it's not gonna hurt anyone. Like your business is not gonna fail if you launch a couple of days later or a couple months later or for me, a whole year later, like, it doesn't matter, like, it's going to happen as long as you keep doing what you want to do. And like you said, Paul, like, you're passionate about it. And yeah, just taking it one step at a time. If you get one thing done in a day, like, that's awesome. That's you've met a goal and just keep believing in yourself and what you're doing. Awesome. These are some really great thoughts to end on. Thank you both so much for sharing your thoughts today. This conversation has been so amazing. I know they've been super helpful to me as a listener, even though I was helping facilitate the conversation, but as someone on the cusp of starting my own SBYD nonprofit, this was so, so great to hear. Um, momentum really is growing as far as sports role in supporting youth, underrepresented and marginalized groups. So hearing about the progress that's been made so far and thinking about all the organizations organizations that are just beginning that have all the potential in the world to make a positive impact is just incredible. So I can't wait to see how things progress for both Up To Us Sports and Tempo SFC in the future. But thank you both again to all of our listeners listening to this mini Vista Table Talk. Be sure to tune in next time to our next episode in the mini Vista Table Talk summer series. And thanks all for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye all.